A few months ago, I did a video called Can I Be Elden Ring While Only Regenerating Health. This changed my whole entire gameplay plan and made it where I had to be extra careful and use Ashes of War to regenerate my health since I was not allowed to use Crimson Flask or the better healing spells. And with Shadow of the Archer releasing, it was inevitable that I would have to do this build yet again. And that's what we're going to be doing today. Can I beat Shadow of the Earth Tree while only regenerating health? Many moons have passed since my initial conquest of the Lands Between, ensuring Lady Venus' rule over it all. Then this time, the Zalmor had betrayed, forcing her hand to send me out to put the rest of them to extinction. Meanwhile, while the lands of Caelid still roam free of unnatural wildlife, Despite my best efforts, it seems that this will never be fully cleansed. Meanwhile, our fairy lady looks through the stone tablets of Queen America, trying to learn all of the old queen's secrets. And far in the back, she found one stone in particular that changed her entire outlook on what everyone was trying to do with Mechala. As she looked upon the stone tablet, it revealed that there is a secret land one that was veiled off by Queen Merica herself. The land of shadow. One where all death would appear only to be suppressed. But something else from this tablet pulled to her. Something that felt very familiar. It was a feeling that she had whenever she was initially inside the remnants of the cocoon and the halo tree. Possibly this is where Mikola had gone. And if Mikola was still alive, this would be a massive threat to her order. She then calls upon me, and she tells me everything. And sending me out back to Mowen Palace to go investigate Mikola's arm, which would teleport us to the Land of Shadow. If Mikola was any aware of Lady Venus, then possibly he is aware of me. With that being said, we need to have a disguise. So we go and start looking around until we eventually find a knight. Then go ahead and kill him and take his armor set and take his weapon. As a funny side note, if Torn ever dies on me, I am literally stuck running until I find the next bonfire. Which is something I wanted to add as an extra funny bit. We then infiltrate Mikola's group by pretending to be Lena's scout. She said there was no time to waste, and that Mikola has instructed them to make it our way to the Shadow Keep and to kill Mesmer. Upon us reaching the Shadow Keep, Mikola has broken his great room. We then take the elevator up and make our way back to Lena to figure out what she has to say about all of it. Did you feel it? Mikola the kind's enchantment appears to have broken. But while my devotion to kindly Mikula remains unchanged, by my troth I am not so sure about the others. No, wait. Perhaps this is a blessing in disguise. I can wield my sword to cull the undeserving, those unfit to bask in tender Mikula's presence. I should have thought of this earlier. Right. It's time to begin ferreting out. Those of us who don't deserve to be at kindly Mikula's side. The Hornsent. Hmm. On one hand, he trusts Mikula the Kind to bring salvation to his people. With the enchantment lifted, his vengeful passions may once again ignite. But surely he'd be mindful of kindly Mikula's promise. On the other hand, the horn scent does present his own dangers. Perhaps your concerns are well-founded after all. Allow me some time to mull it over. We make our way back to the fair lady and tell her everything. She says it's just as she feared. After we left, she kept reading the tablet and learning more information about the Land of Shadow. He wishes to become a god. A new god. This would be a drastic threat to her order. She tells us 
that we must deal with it. Use any type of tactics that we need to do. Manipulation, force, all things are off the table. Mikola must not become a god. If so, it would destroy all that we've done. We then make our way back to the land of shadow and take on the golden hippopotamus. At that, we make our way back to Lena. Ah, there you are. It took me long enough, I know. But I've made my decision. I believe it wisest to eliminate the Hornsen. If he were to point his blade at Sir Mesmer or Queen Marika, perhaps it would not matter, but vengeance changes a man. And one day, his blade may turn towards Mikula the kind. Kindly Mikula is, after all, the true golden child. Even if he discards every last drop of his being, his lineage will always remain. I believe the Hornsen suspects what I have in mind. He never placed his full trust in me, even under the effect of kindly Mikula's spell. You must have recognized something. The scent of the killer that slept within me. The stench of crusted blood. Surprisingly, we died to the horn set during the invasion. That was an absolute surprise, and I did not expect it to do so much damage. But on the second tent, we come back and we get a revenge. After finding the secret white scroll, we try to make our way back to Fair Lady, only to get stopped by Sir Ansbach who asks us if we can let him see this scroll. To not make myself look suspicious, we go ahead and let him read the scroll. Wow, what's this? Yes. Yes, I should have known. Even the truth was itself mere folly. As if using Lord Moog to gain entrance to the Land of Shadow were not enough, he plans to use his corpse as the vessel of his king consort, he has forsaken Lord Moog's soul. He desires only his empty shell. It beggars belief, but I'm afraid Tender Mikola fails to grasp the humiliation implied by this act. One thing is certain. My dear Lord deserved better. You have my gratitude. You have given me the answers I needed. But I can hardly fathom it. Such folly. Unto the end. I am a warrior, but I've aged. I cannot afford to act hastily. Curse it all. I know my limits. I could spend the rest of my life honing my craft. And still that creature would be out of my blade's reach. On our way back to the fair lady. We interact with this guy screaming on the ground. Fail! Vile fail! Oh, terror incarnate! There is life in me yet! I will soon feast upon your heart! Mark my words! You too shall know fear! We then defeat the Dragon Man, climb up the Dragon Peak, watch the Dragon's Fight, and defeat the Survivor. After that, we hear a familiar voice in the distance. Ah, Drake Warrior, dear friend, grant me this one wish. Take this finger, my finger, scale the Jagged Peak, face Bale the Dread, and when you do, Summon me. Summon my soul. My limbs are limbs no more. My heart is twice over filled with fear. But a Drake warrior, I remain. And my soul yet lies on the mountain. If we help this guy out with the dragon, then he might be able to help me out with Mikva. It'd be a win-win. I hereby vow you will rule this 
day. Behold, a true great warrior, and I, Egon. Your fears made flesh. Solid of scale you might be, foul dragon, but I will riddle with hold your rotten hide. With a hail of harpoons, with every last drop of my being. We rush back to Egon as fast as we can. Unfortunately, he has met his demise. Before we can leave the land of shadow, we get pulled over by Lena, who wants to talk to us about Ansbach. Ah, there you are. I'm afraid Sir Ansbach will have to be next. He insists that he's nothing but a worn down over the hill soldier. But in his day, he was the feared commander of the pure blood knights who cleaved open Nicola the Kine with his blood blade. He claims he hasn't the spirit to take up his sword again, but I doubt it'll be very long before he recalls, as I have, the cascading sheets of blood. I'm afraid he cannot be left to fester. I've come to a realization. There's ample evidence. Without kindly Nicola's influence, I'm quite mistrustful of others. We make our way back to the Fair Lady, presenting the secret rights rule and the information that Sir Ansbach has showed us. She was surprised. She knew Mikkel was powerful, but powerful enough to put his own half-brother underneath a charm. Perhaps if we didn't kill Moog, we could have had him on our side. I tell her that Sir Ansbach will soon be attacked by Leda, and that I do plan on assisting him to gain him as an ally. She says good, and there's no time to waste. And she presents me some new armor and a new weapon. She says she wishes that she could have made this sooner. But now is the best time of any. We then take the armor weapon and make our way back to Sir Ansbach to assist him with Leto. We then help Tillie and die more times than I want to admit to the Houston Knight. After we defeat him, we go ahead and get Tillie on our side. With Tillie on our side, it's time to go face the snake with Mesmer, who upon seeing us would recognize we are the Silver Wolf, the Lord of Lady Venus. Still showing his hatred to those without grace, he says this. Yet, my purpose standeth unchanged. Those stripped of the grace of gold shall all meet death. In the embrace of Mesmer's flame. Starting things off, he tries to hit me with a giant orb. Luckily, we're able to dodge it and retaliate. He didn't like that though, and he, he was able to kill me twice. Forcing us to change our actual war back to prayerful strike. As much as I love the train, it really is the worst of the two. Upon coming back, we're able to get him into a second phase. I will not suffer. My lord, devoid of light. No oh, mother, forgive me. Wilt thou be taken in the jaws of the abyssal serpent, shorn of light? And honestly, I cannot praise Mesmer's second phase enough. 
It's just a very unique concept. And the transition of him going from Snake and being inside his base form is absolutely amazing. And with that being said, we are able to defeat him. On his dying breath, he curses Lee Venus's name. We then meet Count Emir, who upon seeing us, would recognize us as the Silver Wolf. He then asks, how has the Fair Lady been doing? Since it's been a very long time since we met at the Academy. We were confused. We were unaware that the Lady had been to the Academy. And apparently he noticed it as well. With him saying, Yes, the fair lady has been to the Academy of the Carrion Royals. She too has studied the stars and learned parts of its magic. However, upon looking at one star in particular, it was seen as heresy, and she was forcefully removed from the Academy. I'm sure Lady Relala can tell you more information. Unfortunately, Rayla is in no mood to talk, especially with me, because we just killed Mesmer, and the only thing she wishes for is for my head to be at the top of her blade. So unfortunately, we do have to defeat her. We make our way back to the Fair Lady and inform her about Count Ymir. She says, I'm surprised the old Ymir is still alive. But indeed, what he said is true. I used to be one of the Academy. However, due to unfortunate circumstances, I had to be released from the Academy. Mainly, they were scared of the path I now walk. I saw a star. The only star that truly mattered inside this world. And it spoke back to me. That is the age that I wish to bring upon. To bring forth the age of the one true star. The only one that matters. She then dismisses me back to the realm of shadow. Which means it's time for Romita seen in the bud. And despite giving me once, we were able to defeat her quite easily. Which allows us to use Mesmer's kindling to burn away the shadow from the tower. After making her way up and dying quite a few times, upon reaching Leda, she would say, Thou silver mutt of the newer order, thou would approach Mikva the kind in the fated battle of the lords. We will not allow this. No one will stop Mikva's age. No one will stop the age of compassion. Usually I would summon Asvog and Talia to help me win out the fight. But because it's just Dragly Dang and Leta, I think I had this in the back. And sure enough, on my first attempt, we were able to defeat both of them. At long last, we finally reach Mikla and his promised consort Radon. This battle will be one for the ages. The fateful clash of two lords in honor of their gods. We then get Rudon into second phase on our first attempt, causing him to summon Mikla, and for Mikla to go on Rudon's back to calm him down, and for them to work as a team. And as usual when it comes to Rudon, this is where he would absolutely wreck my shit in for quite a bit of time, forcing me to go get Golden Vel and Flame Grammy Strength, just for extra damage and some extra protection. But even with that, he was still wrecking my shit in for quite a bit of time. 
until we finally get this attempt. With the death of Mikkel and Radon, we make our way back to the Fair Lady and inform her of their defeat. She's pleased. And now her true age can begin. Now cometh the Age of the Sun, a thousand year voyage guided by its warm embrace. An embrace that will cover all with its shining light and leave none be discarded into faith, love, and companionship. She will then turn towards me and reach out her hand. Well then, shall we? My fair consort of light. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy this video, please help it up by leaving a like, comment, and subscribe. I initially had an epilogue plan where I was going to use Anastasia's Butchering Knife to kill the two Red Bears and to kill the remaining base game bosses. But unfortunately, due to my PC messing up, I'm unable to play on the game at the moment. I do apologize for the person who's been requesting that build. Unfortunately, if you want to figure out what the stats I'm using for this build, you'll have to watch the first initial regeneration video. The stats hasn't changed too much, and I'm sure you can figure out what all I've put stats into. Anyways, goodbye everyone.